The greatest impact you can have in your games is winning in clutch scenarios, whether that be 1v1s, 1v2s, or even 1v3s or worse. Players who consistently perform at a high level in their matches are capable of turning around to even some of the worst scenarios. And even just consistently winning in 1v1s or 1v2s will skyrocket your win rate. I'm going to outline all the important details required to start reliably winning in these situations. But before we jump into that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video. Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a fully automated CS2 trading site. Skins Monkey provides an instant way to get new skins. Along with that, they have a 24-7 live chat support, so if you run into any problems, they'll be right there to help you. If you're interested in finding a specific skin, you can use their search tool. Better yet, if you're not sure what skin you're looking for, you can use their filter tool to find exactly what you're looking for. If you use my promo code Ride or Die, you can earn up to $5 for free. Trade up $100 to make the most of it. Now, if you don't want to trade your skins, but you'd rather buy, Skins Monkey is now offering a 30% deposit bonus. And if you use my promo code Ride or Die, you'll receive an additional 5%. Remember, use code Ride or Die to get up to five dollars for free and claim your thirty-five percent deposit bonus. Thank you, Skins Monkey, for sponsoring this video. The most important principle to first master is isolating one v ones. A 1v4 can appear to be unwinnable in a lot of circumstances, but if we adjust our approach to the situation, so instead of fighting four enemies at once, but rather winning four 1v1s in a row. Doing this, we can make a losing situation quickly develop into a winning one. The easiest way to begin doing this is to look at how we peak angles during these situations. Clearing out angles should be done very deliberately and methodically. Imagine you're doing this, you're cutting slices out of a pie. Move your crosshair to where you know the enemy can be, and then swing the angle while visualizing the enemy being there. There are two things you absolutely don't want to do while doing this. First, do not walk into angles. There's nothing easier than killing an enemy who simply walks into your crosshair. Second, unless you're absolutely certain you'll be swinging into one enemy, do not wide swing. Wide swinging will make it difficult for one person to kill you, but wide swinging into more than one opponent will almost certainly result in you being traded. Another key principle to master isolating 1v1s is using utility. In scenarios where the enemy team is not allowing you to take 1v1s, using utility is not only useful, but almost necessary. Molotovs and smokes are the two best tools at your disposal for creating windows of opportunity. For instance, if you're wanting to plant B while you're playing Anubis and you hear a CT running through Temple and you also know one's in E-Box, you can molly Temple off and swing the CT hiding in E-Box. Doing this will give you a 7 second window to force a 1v1. This also works with a smoke too, but it's important to note that just because you smoke something doesn't mean the enemy won't disrespect it and just push straight through it. But before we start throwing utility to isolate 1v1s, we first have to consider if the enemy team is even aware of our position. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but Counter-Strike is what people consider to be an imperfect information game. What that means is, unlike games like chess where all the information is available to each player, in Counter-Strike each player chooses which information to give up. This exchange of information for action is usually done through movement, taking space with utility, or shooting our weapon to kill the other players. With a lack of information, a team is left with limited knowledge to make the correct decision to win the round. What this means for us is, information is one of the most valuable resources at our disposal. With this in mind, it's important to consider what information we're going to be giving the opponent. This concept is also incredibly important in clutch situation because with being the only player left alive, any information about your position is all the information the other team needs to win the round. Whenever we make an audible step, shoot our weapon, or throw utility, we need to ensure that this is an exchange for a clear advantage in winning the round. All too often I'll see lower level players throw a flash or any other kind of utility, which as a result reveals their position and makes the round much more difficult to win. Speaking of revealing your position, let's talk a bit about positioning. More specifically, repositioning, which is something you should be doing after each kill. Doing this makes you less predictable and increases the likelihood of you finding another 1v1. An important thing to consider when repositioning is where the enemy thinks you are, and an easy way to manipulate this is by taking advantage of something called death cam. Something a lot of players forget is, immediately after you're killed by another player, you have a few moments to see what that person is doing and where they're headed. You can easily manipulate the information being given to that player's teammates by doing a sort of misdirection with the death cam. This type of play is something I see all the time in my face at lobbies, and honestly, I've seen it fool even some of the best players in my region. An easy way to start implementing this into your gameplay is, once you get a kill, simply move towards a bomb site or an area of the map that you have no intention of going to and then follow through with your initial intentions. One thing a lot of players are doing wrong is not being aware of the time left in the round. The time remaining in the round should dictate how you approach any scenario. For instance, as a CT when the clock is running out, you should always consider the time remaining in the round and ask yourself, do they have enough time to plant? 
Sometimes just not fighting and living will result in a round win. Also as a T, the time remaining in the round should dictate your pace of play. If there's 20 seconds left and you're in a 1v3, there's no point in slow clearing angles and walking to a bomb site. Instead, it's time to consider the fastest way to get the bomb planted safely to provide yourself with more time. But once the bomb is planted as a T, if you're in a 1v3 or worse situation, it could be beneficial to make an aggressive play even after the bomb is planted just to swing the odds more in your favor. There's nothing more unwinnable than planting the bomb and then hiding just to wait for a tap and swing into three players crosshairs. But if you manage to plant the bomb and you're in a 1v1 or 1v2 situation, then you should consider playing in a powerful post-plant position. Some of you may already be aware of the stronger spots to play post-plant, but for those who aren't, I'm going to quickly provide two spots for each bomb site on every map starting with Mirage. On A, you can plant default and play Palace or CT. On B, you can plant default and go apps, or plant front site and go cat. For nuke on B, if it's planted in front of double or Astralis, which is right here, you can play in double. Also, if it's planted Astralis, you can play from control. If you plant default behind site, you should be playing from single. On A, when the bomb is planted back site, try and play from heaven, or if it's planted front site, you can play from hut or mini. Moving on to dust two, if you're playing on B, you can plant default and stay upper tunnel, or you can play from big box. Be cautious when playing big box if you don't have upper tunnel control. On A, you can plant for cat and hold cat or plant on top of these boxes and play from pit. For vertigo on B you can plant default and play stairs or you can plant by these double boxes and play gen. On A you can plant in the middle of the site and play from heaven or side hall. If it's planted default you can play from side hall cat or ramp. Moving on to ancient if you plant default on B you should take ramp control. If it's planted in front of slant, you can either play cave, long, or ramp. On A, planting default means you can play from donut or main. On Anubis, if you're planting default on B, the only good spot to play is for main, but if you plant in front of E-box, you can either play from main or E-box. On A, there isn't a lot of bad plant locations, but the only time you shouldn't be playing from main is if it's planted backside behind cake. Also, if you have the space, playing from heaven is also very strong. Last is Inferno. For B, you can plant default and play banana, dark, or new box. I personally think playing from banana is the strongest, but it's very susceptible to being smoked off during retakes. You can also plant behind fountain and play from church. On A, one of the strongest post-plant positions in the game is apps if the bomb is planted default. Also from the same plant location, big pit or boiler are also very strong. While we're on the topic of post-plant, we should talk a little bit about playing the bomb. Something that has won me countless 1v1s and also something I've relied on to find consistent success in my games is how I approach a 1v1 post-plant as a T. First, I almost always use one of the spots I previously mentioned, and second, I always consider the time remaining on the bomb once I hear the opponent tap at a fuse. If I know there's less than 10 seconds left on the bomb, which if you don't know, it's when the bomb ticking sound changes. I always count at least 4 seconds or so before I peek. This way, if I am killed, there's a small chance the bomb can be diffused, especially if the CT repositioned for the peak. Also, depending if there is a significant time remaining on the bomb, if I hear a tap, I won't peak. I don't always do this, but you'd be surprised just how often this works against some of even the best players. On the flip side, when you're retaking a site as a CT in a 1v1, you'll be blown away with just how often sticking a diffuse works when you have a kit. But generally, a more consistent way to approach these scenarios is to tap the bomb and peek the angle you believe the T is holding from. These situations can be really tricky, and generally, if the T plays it well, it can be almost impossible for the CT to win. But what works really well for swinging the odds in your favor is using smokes. Using these properly will win you countless rounds. A general rule of thumb for diffusing in a smoke is to never stand directly on the bomb. Instead, position your character away from the bomb as much as possible to reduce the chance the T will shoot you. But if you're not convinced you'll be able to stick, or if you don't have a kit, I recommend smoking the bomb, then tapping the fuse, and simply walking out of the smoke to catch the remaining T off guard spamming the smoke. If you're on the other side of this, my best advice when the CT throws the smoke is to swing right when you hear the smoke being thrown. This is especially important if you don't feel comfortable hitting the spray through the smoke, or if you're not certain you know where the bomb is planted. But if you're a CT and you don't have a smoke in a post-plant situation, there are a few more things you can do to trick the enemy into thinking you're defusing, or at least swing the odds more in your favor. First, while defusing, you can actually scope in and out with any weapon that has this function. The audio cue for this isn't very loud and it doesn't travel all that far, but for more inexperienced players, this may make them think you're actually not sticking at a fuse. You can also throw grenades while sticking. All you have to do is left click a grenade before tapping the bomb, then release it after you start sticking. This can also trick inexperienced players into thinking you're not sticking. And even against better players, throwing a flash and it popping while you're defusing could blind the enemy team, result in you being able to stick the defuse. While we're on the topic of tapping defuses and sticking, it's important to mention the strength of tapping a bomb plant as well. For whatever reason, this catches people off guard all the time. 
especially in lower elos. This is also really useful if you're sure there's someone on site that you need to get rid of in order to plant the bomb. Try this in your matches. You'll be surprised just how often this works. Something that's worth mentioning is knowing when to save. While I was climbing through every rank and face it, this was something that I noticed that hardly anyone does in lower elos. There is absolutely no shame in understanding your limitations as a player and saving your team's economy. A good way to look at it is like this. What's the probability of you winning a 1v5 post plant as a CT without a kit or any utility? But what are the odds if you give your top frag a rifle next round that they could potentially make a round winning play? Every play in Counter-Strike can be looked at as a percentage play and making consistently high percentage plays over the course of an entire match would be the difference between having a 50% win rate and a 51% win rate. The last topic that's worth discussing when it comes to winning more in clutches is mechanics. Like I said earlier, the best way to approach these situations is to find 1v1s. The only problem with this is, if you can't consistently win 1v1s, then there isn't a good chance you'll be winning any 1v3s, let alone 1v1s. The one thing that I always recommend when it comes to improving mechanics is deathmatching. I personally prefer using community DM servers, but if you don't want to keep getting kicked because you don't have VIP, then Valve DMing will be just fine. I said this in previous videos, but if you're serious about improving, I recommend doing what I did for a long time and still continue to do, and that is DMing for at least one hour a day. You'll be blown away with just how fast you improve by just doing that. But if you're looking for something that also simulates these scenarios that you'll find often in a game, I recommend looking into retake servers. The side I use for retakes is Xplay. While you're playing on Xplay or any other retake server, you'll also be able to improve your ability to play around a bomb. Also, and this may sound ridiculous, but getting better at laning utility, especially smokes, will increase your ability to clutch rounds tremendously. Clutch situations are fluid and change very fast when new information is discovered. Feeling comfortable throwing grenades without lineups will make these situations much easier to win. This also comes in handy when you need to smoke the bomb on CT, which ideally isn't done when you're standing directly on top of the bomb. But even if you have the best mechanics, if you lack game sense, then you'll struggle with winning in these situations. That's why experience is king. As you continue to play the game, predicting how the enemy reacts to certain information will become easier and easier. If you want to learn more about developing game sense, then I strongly suggest you check out my game sense guide. Link to that will be in the description. Getting better at this skill, which is winning in the clutch, is complicated and it's a culmination of a lot of different skills in Counter-Strike. And like I said, the more you practice, play matches, and adopt the things I said during this video, I have no doubt that you'll win more rounds and ultimately win more games. Before we close out the video, I want to shout out all the Ride or Die YouTube members. Over these past two weeks, dozens of you guys have joined and honestly, I couldn't be more happy. Your donations and memberships are what keeps this channel going, and if enough people join, I can officially make creating content my full-time job. Also, before we go, I want to invite you to the Ride or Die Discord. There you can find people to play with, post pictures of your pets, join giveaways, ask me questions, and take part in 10 mans. But that's all I got. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with my content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. Thanks for watching.